Welcome back to the channel everyone. So today I'm going to be doing my top 10 movies to watch during the Halloween season. I know this is a board game channel, but I've stated before in previous video that I'm going to be incorporating more movie stuff in here, doing some more movie talk, maybe doing some short films, as that has, has been, always been my one of my biggest passions. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I am ready for Halloween. This is uh, my Halloween hoodie. I wear this throughout the whole month of October. If you're interested in purchasing this hoodie, my friend makes it himself. I'll be posting his Instagram account in the comment section if you're interested in purchasing a hoodie, t-shirt, or a long sleeve. Uh, I believe he makes different colors as well. But yeah, the, the, his Instagram account will be in the comment section. Just send him a direct message, a personal message, and um, maybe he'll get back to you. But yeah, it's Halloween season. I am a horror fanatic. You know, I watch horror movies throughout the whole year. You know, it's um, out of all the movies I watch, I believe uh, it, I'm more, the most passionate about horror. Uh, the thing is with horror is that it's, it, there's so many different stories that you can come up with in horror. You know, how many stories can be covered in an action movie? It's the same thing over and over again. You know, horror has always been uh, close to my heart. You know, it is it is my favorite genre. And I wanted to make this uh, this top 10 list that's appropriate for Halloween. So let's get right into it. Now, number 10 is going to be a fairly newer movie that took me by surprise. So this came out around 2016, 2017, I think. Maybe a little uh, past that. And that is Terrifier. So Terrifier, I don't want to say it introduced a new uh, horror character. as Because uh, Art the Clown has actually been around for a little longer than that. Uh, Dam the director Damien Leone, who's uh, actually a New Yorker right here from Staten Island. Um, he came up with the character many years ago in, in a short film. He was in uh, another movie called All Hallows Eve. And uh, I believe another one before that called Night Circle. So the character has been around for a while, but this is his time uh, that Art the Clown actually shines. It's a bit of a brutal slasher, but you can tell that the director has a passion for 80s slasher movies. And it was really, really well done. Um, you know, it's got that campy 80s feel. Again, if, if you you know can't watch Blood and Gore, I highly don't don't watch it because it is a pretty bloody movie. Um, but again, it's really well done. There's some good jump scares in there. This is a classic character that I can see being around for a long time. So he's up there with, you know, Leatherface, Jason, Freddy Krueger. Really, a, 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 I, it, to me, it is a classic movie. Uh, the second one came out last year. It was good, a little too long. It got, it dwelled too much into the, uh, fantasy stuff. But I, I did enjoy it, but the first one is the best one, and that's why it is on my top 10. So that's going to be number 10, Terrifier. Number 9 is another classic. So this is a movie from the mid-70s, and that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That introduced the uh, famous character Leatherface. But what I love about Texas Chainsaw is that it's, it's a low-budget movie. And, you know, when you, you know, you see the title and everything, you're going to think it's going to be this real gory movie, but it's not that at all. This is a movie that really relies heavily on fear, terror, instead of just blood and gore. And that's what Texas Chainsaw did. And it just, it's one of those type of movies that it's like a slow burn and then it just builds up and just gets crazy. Like, you know, this, I, I, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm pretty sure many people have watched it, but if you haven't, I highly recommend you check it out. Like I said, it's not an ex extremely bloody movie not like what the remake was which was i thought was pretty well done I and mean, i know there's one that came out a few years ago on netflix that was not a good movie at all but you know the classic the original texas chainsaw massacre is an is a instant classic i didn't like the second one that came out in the 80s i wasn't really a fan of it um i think the original should have been well enough left alone i don't think it needed a sequel i thought it ended perfectly but yeah, that's going to be my number nine, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, one I highly recommend you check out. Number eight is going to be Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, I was debating whether putting the whole series on here, because I do enjoy watching the series during the Halloween time, but, you know, the second and the fifth one are very weak series, uh, weak additions to the series, and I really do prefer to watch the original one, um, you know, 
I remember seeing that when I was like three, four years old and it scared the ever loving crap out of me. And then I watched it again many years later when I was you know, a lot older and it scared the crap out of me again. It, you know, Wes Craven is a genius. You know, he, he brought us the Freddy Krueger character. I had the honor of meeting Robert Englund at a convention once. One of the nicest guys again I've ever met. Takes time to uh, talk to his fans. I mean, charges a lot for an autograph, but you do get a good, decent conversation out of it. Um, but again, Nightmare on Elm Street, what can I say? One of the best horror movies that come out of the 80s. Still a classic to this day. Uh, you know, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, they don't remake it or you know, leave well enough alone. If you can't make a sequel, don't, don't bother with these. Everybody wants to make a sequel now. You know, the, the remake was terrible. You know, it's one of those type of movies just appreciated for what it is. Did it need sequels? No, but, you know, money gets in the way. And uh, I'm not saying they weren't bad. I did enjoy the third and the fourth one. Uh, anything pretty much other than that is pretty much garbage. But, yeah, the original movie is still a classic. And, again, if you haven't watched it, I don't know what you're waiting for. Definitely check that movie out now. Great movie to watch during this season. That is Nightmare on Elm Street. Number seven. Now, this movie I consider the godfather of horror movies. And that's because... It was nominated for Best Movie. It didn't win, but it, it you know, I, I think it, it should have. I'm trying to think of what movie beat it. I think it was The Sting, but The Exorcist was one of the best movies that come out in 1973. You know, it had a great director, uh, William Freakin, who was known for The French Connection, a, a movie I highly, highly recommend if you haven't checked out. But, you know... French Connection was such a gritty New York City cop movie, a movie that was filmed literally in my backyard, uh, and, you know, a few blocks away from where I grew up, and uh, it just captured that early, gritty New York City vibe, uh, like, you know, cop stories, it's also based off a true story, but he incorporated that grittiness into this horror movie, and one thing, you know, everybody says the scariest movie ever made, so my story with The Exorcist is, it took me a while to watch it. I've always heard all these things about it. You know, scariest movie in the world. My parents always used to say uh, I couldn't sleep for days, weeks. My mother still won't watch it to this day. I have cousins that won't watch it to this day. So one day, we're in a Coconuts. If, again, if uh, old like me, if this was a music video store back in the day. I saw it on VHS for pretty cheap. So I was like, you know what? I must have been about maybe 15 years old. I'm like, screw it. I'm buying this movie. I want to see what all the hype, you know what all the hype is about and i remember when they they released the um the version you never seen back in like the early 2000s or late 90s i remember but i never had a chance to go see that in theaters i was supposed to go see it once but i forgot something that it fell through but anyway so i finally get down to watching it i was watching it with a friend of mine and uh my dad and i'm sitting through it, i'm like well the first, first thing that struck me was you know you have these creepy the creepy tile screen comes up the creepy music and all of a sudden you hear uh, the Muslim call to prayer. It starts with that. And, you know, when people think of possessions and exorcisms, they think of, uh, you know, Christian themes. But I like how it started with that because it's trying to show that, you know, evil has no religion. And right there you knew, like, oh, man, you're going to be in for a wild ride. Again, so I start watching it. Acting's incredible. The story was incredible. But at the same time, I'm like, this is supposed to be scary. I didn't, I mean... You have to understand, for the time it came out, you know, the, I guess the face and uh, the fact that people thought that, you know, possession was real. Whether it is or not, you know, I'm not going to dwell into that. But still, an excellent movie. It relies mostly on the creep factor. It doesn't rely on, you know, jump scares or anything. Very well acted movie. Uh, great movie to watch during Halloween. Uh, that's going to be number seven, The Exorcist. So number six is a movie that has grown on me over the past 10 years. When I first saw it, I thought it was terrible. I'm like, this is a bad movie. You know, it shouldn't exist. But that's because it was in a series that um, was already had a popular character. And that movie is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. So Halloween 3, Season of the Witch is considered uh, a sequel to... Halloween 2, well, it's in the same universe, but it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. It's really a story about um, these masks that are given out to kids during Halloween, but 
there's weird occurrences happening. There's these people going around attacking, like uh, attacking uh, guys who work for this company that sh that manufactures uh, these masks. And of course, you know, the investigate ends up being owned by an old Irish guy that's part of the the uh, I believe it's like the the, the cult of Sam Hain or something. So they're really what the masks do. It's like. Uh, they, they, it's meant to uh, trigger something in the mask when a certain commercial comes on on Halloween and it's supposed to sacrifice a bunch of people. To, it's, it, the premise sounds stupid, but it's a movie that I think has grown with fans over time. And I would really love to see a sequel to this. Um, again, I, I think it has gr uh, grown in popularity over the last 10 years. Again, when you know, back when I was watching watching horror movies, everybody crapped on this movie. They thought it was the worst. You know, it had nothing to do with Michael Myers. It was like, oh, why would you call Halloween? But the whole thing was John Carpenter didn't want to continue with Michael Myers. He wanted to make a different story for every Halloween movie. Of course, that didn't happen. They came out with Halloween 4, which is not on this list. Uh, but I think Halloween 3 should deserves the respect that it does. As, um, again, it's... If you really think about it, if you're trying to think that it's, you know, it should stand alone on its, as its own movie. But it, it's a movie I think you should give a chance. And it's now a movie that I always watch during this Halloween season. So number five is going to be a real personal favorite of mine. Uh, and that is The Thing. So John Carpenter is The Thing. If you haven't watched it, it is a sci-fi horror movie, which is actually a remake of an old movie from the 50s called The Thing from Outer Space. So it's about a bunch of guys that are working in Antarctica at a weather station, and they come across this dog that's being chased by a Norwegian guy. Uh, of course, they don't know why this guy's shooting, trying to kill this dog. They end up killing the, the guy itself in self-defense, and ends up being the dog is infected by an alien, and that secretly starts uh, infecting guys in the, uh, in the weather station. And nobody, everybody's trying to figure out who's who. It's a really good movie. One of the best horror movies that's ever come out in the 80s. Still holds up to this day. You know, great practical effects. You know, John Carpenter is a genius when it, to that, you know, creep factor. You know, it has Kurt Russell. What more can you ask, ask for? You know, it's, it, I know there's a few games, board games out with it too. They made a few video, video games based off of it. But yeah, The Thing is just an incredible movie, one I highly recommend, and one that I always try to have a chance to, to watch during Halloween. Number four is another movie about from the late, yeah, about the late 2000s. Uh, another movie that it really surprised me because it never went into theaters. It was actually straight to DVD, and that is Trick or Treat. So Trick or Treat is a Pulp Fiction type movie. I like to say Pulp Fiction because it's, Several stories that all somehow intertwine. And of course it takes place during the Halloween season. You got this little, what it looks like to be a kid dressed up in like a pumpkin uh, costume called Sam. Going around, I'm not going to say much because again I want you guys to check this movie out. Uh, but yeah, every single story has a really unique twist to it. And it's so well done. It's a You can tell it's a movie that's just made with passion. And uh... I forgot, I forgot the director's name, but he's been trying to make a sequel for the longest time. It's probably one of my most anticipated horror movies. But uh, yeah, Trick or Treat, a really great movie. Love watching it during this time. Again, if you have a chance, definitely check it out. I'm sure it's on some streaming services. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be number four, Trick or Treat. So number three. I'm sure people know that this would uh, appear on my list, and that's going to be the Friday the 13th series. Again, I say the series. I know it's not one movie itself, but I love the Friday the 13th series as a whole. You know, anything after Part 8, to me, is garbage. I, I enjoyed the remake. Um, you know, Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X are hot garbage to me, even though I love Kane Hada. I've got the chance to meet him a, a couple times. But, uh, yeah, you know, what can I say? Friday the 13th. Gave us the most, probably the most popular horror character of all time. I mean, every anytime everybody takes a, a slasher movie or 80 slasher, the first thing that pops in mind is Jason Boyes in that hockey mask. Or the burlap sack. Whatever whatever you prefer, whatever you think is your favorite. But uh, yeah, Friday the 13th, you know, 
each story is, is uh, you know, it's got crappy acting. It's a cheesy story, but I just always enjoyed that that campy feel. You know, it's 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 a little, they're a little bit goofy if you, if you really think about it. But it's just, they're just an enjoyable series. Uh, I have a personal connection with those movies. Not going to go into it, but but yeah, Friday the 13th means a lot to me. I I always watch them in, during the Halloween season. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody here has watched at least one Friday the 13th movie. Again, you know, nothing really story wise, but they're just fun movies to watch. And that's going to be my number three, the Friday the 13th series. Number two is going to be Halloween 2. So Halloween 2, again, came out three years after the original Halloween. And um, it takes place on the same night. So John Carpenter originally did not want to make a sequel to Halloween. He thought the first movie ended the way it should have. But people, you know, slasher movies become popular. Friday the 13th was huge. And they threw a bunch of money at John Carpenter to make a sequel. And he said that he... Grabbed a bottle of whiskey and just came up with his crappy script overnight. To him, it's he doesn't consider it a good movie. For me, I love Halloween too. I I don't I think it is by far one of the best slashers or horror movies out there. You know, it's, you know John Carpenter didn't direct it, but he did write it. Now, with Halloween too, it still maintains that creep, you know, like creepy factor. Um, that ambig like ambiguous am, 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 ambiguity to what Michael Myers is. It still doesn't go into what he is, why he you know doesn't uh, why he won't die or whatever. But um, you know, I get it, it. It up the gore a little bit, but it's still I, I for me an incredible sequel. I thought it ended the series very well. Again, you know, they want more. They threw, money talks, BS walks. And they made all these uh, these sequels. I know the new the new trilogy that came out. I was not happy with it. I was I liked the first one, but I felt that after that it just took a big big dive, and it, it was they were just not good. But at least we still have Halloween two as a great sequel, one I definitely can recommend, one that I never miss during the season. So that'll bring me to my number one, which spoiler, which if you haven't figured out, is the original Halloween. So I don't, I don't know what better movie to watch during this time or on Halloween. I remember I went uh, three years ago. My wife and I went to go see the original Halloween at a drive-in here in New York. Uh, I'm not gonna say where, but um, it was in a nice rural area. You know, went back, went well with the movie. Had you know. Uh, but I've watched the series, uh, you know, for as long as I can remember, and it's, you know, it's it still holds up today. It's still got that creep factor, you know. I, again, another movie that doesn't rely on on blood and gore. It, you know, it was just a freaky, scary movie. You know, you had John Carpenter's awesome score, probably one of my favorite, you know, horror composers. You know, you know, it's again that ambiguous. If you just look at that movie as by, leave it as by itself. You know, with that ambiguous ending, it's just a great horror classic. Um, yeah, and it kick start, started, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis's career. It gave us uh, a, a classic character in, in uh, Michael Myers. But, yeah, I, I don't know how anybody could not want to watch that movie during this time. It's, oh, man. I, you know, just thinking about it, I could I could talk for hours about, you know, all little things here and there about that movie. It's... You could just, it, it, and that's what I like when you go see a movie is that you can talk about it after. Why is that? You know, why is that? It gives you that ambiguous ending. And, um, you know, that's what I, that's what I, I've always said, you know, what makes a movie, anything, like, our biggest fear is fear of the unknown. And that's what that movie dwells on. Fear of the unknown. What the hell is this guy? Uh, but yeah, that's going to be my number one movie. Uh, to watch on the hop during the Halloween season, and that is Halloween. Well, that's gonna do it for today, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, you know, leave them in the comments. I would love to hear your favorite movies as well. I know there was some I left out. You know, Evil Dead is a great one. Um, Child's Play that didn't make this list, but uh, I was considering putting They Live, but because it's always always on uh, AMC Fear Fest. But I don't consider that a horror movie. I consider that more of a sci-fi action. But yeah, they live incredible movie. Yeah, there's a, there's a few of that I wanted to put on here, but these are my 
top 10. Um, I um, hope you hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, until next uh, next time, you know, enjoy the Halloween season.